Hello there and um, welcome in today's tutorial class presented to you by O3 Schools Jamba app. The O3 Schools Jamba app is an application which can be installed on phones and laptops. And basically, once you install this application, it gives you access to a variety of features which are included in the app. Um, however, please note there's one very important thing. Once you get the application and install, you realize that you're not actually able to assess every single feature. And even some features you can access, you cannot access them completely. Now, the reason for this is because you have to activate this app. An activation costs 2,500 Naira only, a very small amount. But then some of you may be asking, okay, why am I activating this app? What can I do with it? Well, the Risk Job app offers a wide range of features now some of these features include the mock exam mode in which you can actually set the system put your subjects the time and so we click starts and you realize that it shows you a framework or you know a display virtually identical that which you shall see on the day of your jam so practicing with the o3 schools jam app gets you very very comfortable with taking exams with your laptop and you'll be actually realize that when you get to your jam center that day, this will look exactly identical to what you've been preparing with. And as such, there'll be no difficulty in trying to navigate the application on the day of your exam. You shall be very comfortable with the system because you've tried it several times in your own comfort zone. Now, not just can you answer this mock exam, you know, anyhow, but you can actually accessorize it in any way you want what do i mean you can choose the subjects you can choose the number of questions you want to answer you don't have to answer 40 you can answer 50 you could even reduce it to 10 if you so desire you can choose the time you can increase the time at the beginning while you just start learning you get yourself comfortable and towards the end you can try to reduce the time to test yourself and try to train yourself to actually answer these questions quickly and then you could also choose the topics you want within particular subjects so you could go to maths for example and decide that in maths i want to answer only questions on these particular topics say bearing and distance and as such the app brings out questions only regarding bearing and distance for you so these are all very important and also once you're done with this the actual app actually gives you your answers with explanations and also corrections to those you failed it shows you your score and it shows you your breakdown how much time you spent on each subject how much time you spent on each question this will break down which will help you when you are actually analyzing yourself and your performance characteristics I able to know okay i spent some, some amount of time on maths the time i spent on maths was good i need to focus and spend less time on economics and vice versa so you are actually able to actually learn your strengths your weaknesses and try to begin to improve them, you will be able to know when you've improved because your time will reduce it and try to be able to tell. These and more are available on your O3 Schools Jam app, and these are all going to help you as you prepare for your jam. So do yourself a favor, get your O3 Schools Jam app today and activate it. Now, without much ado, let's move on. And in this class, we shall be looking at bearing and distance however before we actually focus on this brain and distance itself i'm going to take a look at something very important which we cannot actually solve brain and distance with and those are the cosine rule and the sine rule now what are your cosine and sine rule these are related to your Sokatwa and your Pythagoras theory. However, they are a bit special. Sokatwa and Pythagoras theory are focused purely on right angled triangles. Your cosine rule and sine rule can be analyzed any triangle, regardless of whether it has 90 degrees or not. So we have to realize that Pythagoras theory and your Sokatwa are specialized forms. Of your cosine rule and your sine rule 
Let's be draw a triangle and see if I had this triangle. Let's call this side A, this B, and this C. Now, consequentially, I'm going to have angles within the triangle. This angle facing side B directly, I'm going to call it small letter B. The angle facing side A directly, I will call small letter A. And that facing C directly will be small letter C. Now, your sign rule is actually the simpler of both rules. Your sign rule simply tells you that the sign of any angle, let's say sign A, divided by the side it is facing. As you can see, A is facing A directly. So sine A over A equals the sine of any other angle, say B, divided by the side this new angle is facing, which is capital letter B. And if I want to just complete it for the entire triangle, I can say this will still be equal to sine of my last angle C, sine C, divided by the side which C is facing, which also happens to be C. And this is your sine rule. It is typically used if you know two sides and one angle, you want to find another angle, or you know two angles and one side, and you want to get the next side. That's typically the best time to use your sine rule. Now, cosine rule, on the other hand, states that, say I'm looking for this side right here, side A. That becomes A squared equals, what are the two other sides I'm looking for A, B, and C? That becomes B squared plus C squared. Which, if you think about it, kind of looks like Pythagoras theory, right? Yes, however, there's a continuation. Minus 2 times these two sides again. B times C. Cos. What angle is formed between B and C? That is angle A. Therefore, A squared equals B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cos A. And alternatively, if I was given for B, I'll be B squared. What am I now? My two other sides, A and C. A squared plus C squared minus 2AC cos. Now, between A and C, the angle being formed is B. And just to complete all three, C squared will be A squared plus B squared minus 2ab cos now i'm going for c right so i'm dealing with a and b and the angle between a and b is c so these are the sine rule and cosine rule and please note these formulas you don't need to know all of them here you just need to know one because you can only apply one in question know it and know your sine rule and we are ready to actually now tackle the major business, which is bearing and distance. So let's see. As far as bearing and distance is concerned, what are we dealing with? Well, in bearing and distance, one thing we have to know is what happens if you are trying to chart a path. Okay, now when walking on the road, we don't necessarily think about bearing much because we simply so if I want to go and we start walking, it's quite easy. We have four directions to go in. On a ship, you have, well, almost infinite directions. You can turn however you want. A plane too could turn however it wants. So how then should you be told to turn? This is where bearing comes into play. You could be told, turn on a bearing of this or that. Now, these are very important. Now please note though, when describing bearings, there are two common ways to use. One makes use of your coordinates, and one is simply just a number. By coordinates, what do we mean? We have our four cardinal points, which in mathematics are generally written as north up here, south down here, east to the right, 
and waist to the left. Now please take note, this is the best way to write it, but if for any reason you mix yours up, it won't affect you much as long as you are constant in your mix up. What do I mean? Do not write it like these ones, then in the same drawing, now write it on that place as north, south, west, east. This automatically is a problem because in this one, east was on the right, now it has come to the left. That would cause a big mistake in your calculations. Instead, if you are writing it like this, be constant with that. Writing like this, be constant with this. But this is a standard, and as such, that is what I am going to solve with. Now, angles given in this sense are usually written in the form of either north or south is always written first. So you can have north or south written first. Then a number is written, an angle is given. And within this method, the angle is usually between 0 and 90. That means I could be told 45 degrees. Yeah, that's right, 60 degrees. Then, once I've written this, I will then be giving a east or west direction. So remember, north or south comes first, then the value, then I could be told, let's say, east here or west here. It doesn't really matter. This means 45 degrees east of north, and this is 60 degrees west of south. How do I represent that? Let's start with this. This means I come to the north, which is this one going up, and I move 45 degrees towards the east, towards the east. This means that this is my bearing. If it was west that was here, I would be moving towards the west. Just like down there, I have south 60 degrees, meaning I'm going to use this line now, facing down, not the one facing up. And I'm going 60 degrees towards the west, which means for me, I'm going to turn 60 degrees before having my line. So 60 degrees towards the west, which means that this small angle here must be 30 degrees, because remember, they are all 90. So you see? This is simply one way of representing your bearing. Another way is simply by giving you an angle. And this angle is usually between 0 and 360 degrees. Typically, if it is less than 3 digits, they prefer to write 0 to start it. For example, 120 degrees works because it's 3 digits, 1, 2, and 0. But 25 degrees does not similarly work because it's just 2 digits. Therefore, we would like to add a zero here to make it zero to five degrees. That zero doesn't matter, it's just a convention. Now, once you have that, how do you move? So we come up here to the north and simply begin to turn towards your right. So if you are moving, this is 90, 180, 270, and 360 degrees. So that's simply is our method very very straightforward so these are the two ways bearings can be given an object could actually start from here move on a bearing and go this way and then move on another bearing and come this way after which you can see maybe he's going back and as you can see this then forms a triangle now the analysis of this triangle can be done with the idea of cosine rule and sine rule firmly in mind so it's this simple we are ready right now to try to begin to solve our questions using our o3 schools jump app as usual so get yours out get your pens and your papers it's time for us to solve a few questions okay now my very first question is from the year 2018 model one question 23 2018 model one question 23 and this one doesn't even come with any story whatsoever 
I'm giving the diagram straightforward so that I have something that looks like this. And that here is 30 degrees. Um, this is 6, this is 4.5, and this is x. I'm told to determine the value of x. Now, typically, you ask yourself, which should I use? So, Catois obviously doesn't work. I'm not told any of them is 90 degrees. Sine rule. Can I apply sine rule? In this case, I know two sides and I know one angle. And what I'm looking for is a third side. That means sine rule would not work. Indicating to me instantly that I must be using my cosine rule. Now, as I'm looking for this side, x, that will be x squared equals, pick the first side, 4.5 squared, plus the other side, 6 squared, minus 2 times 4.5 times 6, cos of my angle here, which is 30. That will be 4.5 squared. Let's press that with our calculators. So simply trying to open mine here. Okay, 4.5 squared, 4.5 is 20.25. Plus 6 squared is going to be 36. Minus 2 times 4.5 is 9. 9 times 6 is 54. And cos 30, as we know from our special angles, is root 3 over two so let's do our addition here 20.25 plus 36 that gives 56.25 minus now if i look at my options i realize that options are all in decimal forms implying that this sort form right here should be reconciled into decimal and i know my calculator has square root so that will be square root of three divided by two times 54 and that gives me 46.765 let's do this subtraction 56.25 minus 46.765 that's 9.485 and as we know to cancel square i take the square root of both sides which gives me the square root of 9.485 is 3.08. And when I go back to my options, I can see clearly that that is option D. So you see, your cosine rule is this easy. If, however, please note, if I had, let's say, I had known this angle as 30 degrees, and I was then being asked to find this angle instead. I would have applied sine rule. Because you notice, I know this angle and the side opposite it. I don't know this angle, but I know this side opposite it. So I found out that it rounded up to give me sine 30 over what's opposite it, 4.5, equal to sine x over 6. You see, anyone can be applied depending on the parameters given in the question. So based on your question, you choose. If both are possible, I recommend this sign rule. It is actually faster in most cases. All right. First question down. For our next question, we'll go to the year 2006. And this time, question 30. 2006, question 30. In triangle XYZ, angle XYZ is 15 degrees, angle XZY is 45, and XY is 7 cm. Now, we know how to draw this triangle, but I do not know what it looks like. So let's just draw a random triangle and label as we go. Let's call your X, call your Y, and call your Z. Back to that angle, X, Y, Z is 15 degrees, indicating X, Y, Z. The angle right here is 15 
degrees. Then angle XZY is 45 degrees. XZY. The angle right here is 45 degrees. And that the length of XY is 7 cm. XY. 7 cm. We have been asked to find YZ, which is this place here. I can call that A. So if you look at this diagram, I happen to know two sides, two angles rather, one side and I need another side. Well, right now I could have applied sine rule, except for the fact which I do not know this angle. But can I get it? Yes, if I call you a theta, I remember that the sum of angles in a triangle must be equal to 180 degrees. So 15 plus 45 is 60 to 180 that's 180 minus 60 which is 20 degrees sorry 820 degrees and once i know this instantly i can go to my sine rule which will be sine of theta which i now know to be 120 over the side facing it a that's what i'm looking for equal to which side do I know? I know this side. Therefore, I'm going to use the angle which faces it, which is 45 degrees. So sine 45 over 7 cm. Now, a look at my options tells me that they are all in sort form, which means I have to get my angles using special angles. As you would have seen if you've watched the video on trigonometry. If you've not done that, please go do that. And you'll probably be able to know what you're going to do here. Because we notice that 120 is in the second quadrant. As a result, 180 minus 120, which I can just look at right here, must be 60. So in this place, I'm actually dealing with 60 and it's in the second quadrant. Based on the fact that it's in the second quadrant, sign is positive. So I'm not going to put any sign there or you know any negative notation. I'll simply leave it as sign 60. And what is sine 60? Sine 60 is root 3 over 2. All over A equals what's sine 45? Sine 45 is root 2 over 2 all over 7. See? Very easy. Before the other thing, 2 can cancel 2 out here. So that's gone. Cross multiply. A times root 2 becomes root 2a and this becomes 7 root 3 and to make a stand alone over root 2 over root 2 meaning a equals 7 root 3 over root 2 once you get here you remember you cannot find this in your options for the simple reason being that you are not permitted in mathematics to leave root as your denominator and to fix that, you have to rationalize. If you do not know how to do this, I'll also tell you to go check out the video on swords. How to rationalize? Simply multiply by root 2 over root 2. This becomes 7. Root 3 times root 2 is root 6. And root 2 times root 2 is 2. Which is my answer is 7 root 6 over 2 centimeters. Which when I look at my options, that is option B. So you see, this is actually, I will keep on repeating it, very, very easy. Remember your sine rule and your cosine rule, and you are mostly good to go. Okay. My next question is this time from the year... 2017 model one question nine 2017 model one question nine a bed flies from a point x to another point y which is directly north of it so this is my point x how some year to a point y directly north i remember north is Facing up, I mean, she's going straight up. 
to point y. It then flies to point z, I mean from y after getting here. It's then going to fly again to point z, which is a distance of 13 kilometers from y on a bearing of 120 degrees. Now remember, this is not your south north you know, coordinate system, it's just the number, which means I'm going to look at my coordinate system and say, starting from the stop and turning clockwise, one point should be somewhere here. So it's going to move like this, 120 degrees, to the new point Z, and the distance is 13 kilometers. Okay, then this is going to be point Z. What I'm being asked to then calculate is the value of x, y. We have to find this distance. Let's call this distance um, A. Lack of any other letter, let's call it A. So, if this is 120 degrees, this inner part, so this is a straight line, must be 60 degrees. So, doing a fair bit of analysis for this, if I was simply to continue this to this point, what do I have? It turns out that in this case, I have a right angled triangle. And consequentially, do I really need to find, you know, to use my um, sine rule and cosine rule? No. Because it's a special right angle triangle, my Sokatua can work. Implying that I know this angle, I know the hypotenuse, and I want the adjacent. Adjacent the hypotenuse must be cos. So, cos 60 cos to adjacent A by hypotenuse. 18. Cross multiply. A times 1 is A. This is 13 cos 60. And what is cos 60? Cos 60 is 1 over 2. 13 times 1 is 13. Divided by 2 is 6.5 kilometers. And that is option A. So again, you see. These are very, very, very simple. So let's move on. This time, we are moving on all the way to the year 2020. 2020, model one, question number 28. Is our fourth question. And for this one, what do we have? A point X is on a bearing of 342 degrees from a point Y. That means, let's start with Y. And typically, this was why I would advise you to draw in the center of your page. You have to show you're working. For jam, in your rough paper, you can start anywhere. But the advisable is to start in the center because you do not know in what direction you'll be heading. It's better to start from the center so that if you go in a direction you're not expecting, it wouldn't much matter. You see how space. Because right now, if I come here and say this is y, this y is going on a bearing of 342 degrees. And I'm going to start from here. Turn this way. That's 90, 180, 270, meaning 342 will end up somewhere here before I actually begin to move. And let's just say I'm moving to this point and this is X. Now I don't care about the distance. What do I care about? If here is 90, another 90, another 90, what then must be remaining in this small part? 342 minus 90 minus 90 minus 90, this is 270, and 342 minus 270, should be about 72 degrees and from our knowledge of mathematics this is an alternate angle a z angle and the angles between the z or the alternate angles as they are properly called are equal 
mean that if here is 72, then here must also be 72 degrees. But remember, when we're calculating our coordinates, we usually start moving from either the north or the south. So since this is southwards facing, we need to start moving from this direction this way. And if here is 72, how far do I have to move? Since everything here must be 90. Well, 90 minus 72 is 18 degrees, which indicates that my movement is 18 degrees. But 18 degrees where? I don't have to stress myself much because I did see my answer is option C. That's the one with 18 degrees. But if you did not know that, remember, on the left hand side, we shall write north or south. This is north, down is south, which means this person is moving southwards. And left is west, right is east. Was moving this way. This is 18 degrees east of south. Option C. So you see, going on distance is really very, very easy. Just follow the proper methodology and you will always get your answers. Okay. Let's keep on trying some questions. And this time, um, we are going to the year 2022. And we are going to try model one question 86. I think this is our fifth question. And this one says, a man walks 100 meters due west from a point X to Y. Now, I know my west should be on my left, so I should probably come start here from my right. 100 meters due west. Let's call it X to Y. Kitten works 100 meters due north. And you see why I said you should draw the center. North is upwards. I have no space to draw my man walking upwards. Meaning I have to erase this and take it downwards. So that you can actually have X here and Y this way. And from here, you can then walk northwards as he desires to a point Z. Now, from when he was walking west, he walked 100 meters. And when no walking north, sorry. He walked another 100 meters. Question is, find the bearing of X from Z. Find that if I'm at Z and I want to go to X, how should I turn? Well, I know that's a straight line. So to go to Z, I'm going to have to turn this way. However, I do not know the angle. Can I get that angle? Well, I can get this angle, can't I? Let's call this theta. Let's call this alpha. So I have to remember is that alpha plus theta equals 180 and as a result alpha equals to 180 minus theta because that's a straight side and consequentially if i'm simply able to get my theta i can get alpha well then what's theta this is opposite and this is adjacent so this is my socatua because this is 90 degrees you know that I must be looking at tan theta equals to opposite 100 over adjacent 100. And tan theta, 100 by 100 is 1. And the tan of what angle gives me 1? My special angles, you know that this is 45 degrees. And consequentially, alpha must be 180 minus 45 which is 135 degrees option b so again you see like i'm saying our methods of solving are easy and straightforward keep your knowledge of trigonometry in your back pocket your knowledge of socatua and also your knowledge of bearing and distance as required and you will be guaranteed to always get the correct answers okay our next question comes from the year 2022 this time i'm going to model two or rather model three 
I'm looking at question number 25. Okay. For this one, we're told that from a point C, which is 600, no 600 meters north of a point A. So from this point C, which is 600 meters north from this other point A. So C is 600 meters north of A. A man then walks eastwards to a place B. Then walks eastwards to a place B, which we are told is 1,000 meters from A. The typical mistake here could be to not put 1,000 here. No, it is 1,000 from A. This is A, that's B. Implying that the distance from here, don't mind my bent line, from there to there is a thousand meters. The question wants us to find the distance of C from B. Let's call the X. And again, it seems we also have a right angled triangle, implying that we can simply use Sokatoa and Pythagoras theory. But in this case, I'm not looking for an angle, so Sokatoa is not needed. I'll simply say that my hypotenuse squared, which is 1000 squared, equals to the sum of the squares of the two sides so that would be that x squared equals 1000 squared minus 600 squared well 1000 times 1000 is 1 million 600 squared should be about 360,000 and 1 million minus 360,000 is 640,000 then as usual, square root of both sides. Square root of 64 is 8. And add two zeros. That must give us 800 meters. Which is option A. So again, you see the methods of solving, I keep on insisting, are actually very, very simple. Okay. Let's take... Two more questions. I think I will actually be quite comfortable with this topic of bearing and distance. For my next question, I'm going all the way to the year 2018. This time I'm looking at model two, question six. This one tells me that three pots A, B, and C are located such that B is located 75 kilometers away from A on a bearing of 055 degrees. Then C is 150 kilometers away from A on a bearing of 295 degrees. Now, if you notice, both of them I have their bearings away from A, which means that first of all, I should just have A here and we need to locate the other points. From A, I got a bearing of 55 degrees. Remember, I start from the north. I just move a little bit. 55 is less than 90, so I'm still in my first quadrant. This is my 55 degrees bearing. And that leads me to my point B. That means this is point B. And I am told that the distance is 75 kilometers. Then C, on the other hand, is on a bearing of 195 degrees, which means I'm going to turn this way. 195 is above, sorry, 295, not 195, 295. And that is definitely above 90, above 180, above 270, and then it's somewhere in my fourth quadrant. Now, this is 270. If to this point is 270, what must be remaining here must be 25 degrees to complete 295, of course. And I'm told that this distance is 150 kilometers. So, this is going to have to join to B somehow. But what can I do? Well, if here is 25 degrees, the internal part has to be what? Keeping your knowledge of mathematics. And you know that angles like that are 90 degrees. Then it means the internal part 
is 65 degrees. So 65 plus 25 plus must be 90. And well, since this is one triangle, part is 65, part is 55. Altogether, the angle must be 65 plus 55, which is 120 degrees. I'm then being asked to find the distance between B and C, which is this distance, which I can call X. And accordingly, looking at the question, I realize that the only way I can solve for this right now is using my cosine rule, because I know two sides and the angle they form, and I'm looking for the third side. So for my cosine rule, X squared would be equal to 150 squared plus 75 squared minus 2 times 150 times 75 cos my angle, which is 120 degrees. So, S squared will be 150 squared is 225, 0, 0, plus 75 squared. Let's just see that. That is 5, 6, 2, 5. Minus 2 times 150 times 75 is 2, 2, 5, 0, 0. Next up, we have cos 120. Yes, yeah, so you have to remember your trigonometry is very important. I keep on insisting. You have to check out that video. Now, cos 120. 120 is not in your first quadrant. It's above 90. It's in the second quadrant. And as a result, if you remember, in the second quadrant, only sign is positive, meaning this must be negative. And how do I find cos 120? I'm going to be 180 minus 120 which is 60. What I actually need is negative cos 60. And cos 60 is 1 over 2. I mean, this is negative 1 over 2. Okay. So, continuing from there, I realized that I can do this addition. That would be 22500 plus 5625, giving me 28125. Then over here, minus times minus is plus. And 22500 times 1 over 2 is 11250. All right, simple bit of addition over here. 28125 plus 11250, giving me 39375. And of course, to cancel square, I must take square root. Meaning x equals the square root of 39375. And simply finding that square root, I get 198.43 kilometers. Looking at my options, they are all expressed in whole numbers. So I approximate this to so the nearest whole number, which is 198 kilometers. Option D. So you see, this is how your bearing and distance works. There is no much more difficult question than this. So, time for our last example. All you need to remember, please, very important, you have to draw your diagram accurately using the information they give to you. If for any reason your diagram is wrong, you are very likely as well to get the wrong answer in your solving. So key is to pay attention to your diagram. Okay, this question comes from the year 2000, question number 26. And it says, a ship sails a distance of 50 kilometers in the direction 50 degrees east or south, and then sails a distance of 50 kilometers in the direction 40 degrees east of north. Let's try and draw that from the beginning. A ship, a ship sails in the direction 60 degrees east of south. This is south, as you are aware, north, east, and west. They sail in this way, 50 degrees towards the east. So from the south, it goes towards the east by 50 degrees. And then moves a distance of 50 kilometers. So let's see, that's my diagram. 
and from then it then sails a distance also of 50 kilometers but now in the direction 40 degrees east of north so northwest east south remember they must be the same and this time 40 degrees towards the east from the north so here is 40 degrees and the distance this time is also 50 kilometers okay let's say it gets to this point I'm to find the bearing of the ship from its original position we we'll find the bearing of the ship now that it is here so the angle from here is going back here let's just join this together okay all right let's just bring it up here and say okay now note this angle being from the right here yeah my bearing has to be somewhere there right from its original position which was here so what should that be giving me what should that be giving me let's try and find all the angles within this shape first of all well if here is 50 degrees using what i like to call the z angles here is 50 then here must also be 50 degrees which instantly means 50 plus 40 is 90 so i'm having 90 degrees right there depending that this angle right here represents 90 degrees i'm going to be using Pythagoras theory and so rather than my you know sine rule and cosine rule okay so this is my hypotenuse but i do not want distance instead i want to find an angle how do i get that angle well let's see this man or this direction is a little bit higher but i know my bearing has to be from an angle here because if i can get this angle here and i know that here is 40 degrees and as such here is also 40 degrees if i then know the angle here which i can call theta then automatically whatever is left must be equal to this part out of 90. Look at it. I'm having three different angles there. I know that this is 40. If I simply know this second one, then I'm able to know this tiny one, which we are calling alpha. So how then do I solve? Well, I have to get this angle. Using Sokatoa, this is my hypotenuse, obviously. This is opposite and this is adjacent. So that means that tan theta equals to opposite which is 50 opposite over adjacent which is also 50 so tan theta equals 1 and theta is the tan inverse of 1 and what angle gives us 1 when well, we find the tan 45 degrees indicating that this is 40 degrees this part is 45 degrees and as such Alpha plus 45 plus 40 equals 90. So alpha plus 85 equals 90. Alpha equals to 90 minus 85, which is 5 degrees. So the small angle right there is 5 degrees. Now, if you look at my co-options, which are given to me in terms of my coordinates, not south east and west obviously i know i am moving you know if i'm finding the bearing of the ship from its original position which means rather than actually stopping here i'm trying to look at the ship from actually this side it's actually from here i'm looking at the ship meaning that since i now know that here is five degrees using the same z angles we've been using so far but it's from year to year to year, meaning that year must also be five degrees. Now, so from the original position of this ship, to look at where it is now, my bearing is going towards the east. So I know my answer must have east on it, and also I'm towards north, and it must have north. How do I get the value? Well, if year is five. Everything here should be 90. 
meaning that t is 85 and since i'm turning from the notes this way i'm turning 85 degrees and that is option d Tracy, we almost made a tiny mistake here we as well have to look at the difference in bearing i was told to find the bearing of the ship from its original position meaning looking from the original position where is the bearing of the ship i missed it up and almost wanted to look for the bearing of the original position from the ship those are two different questions if i was looking from the original position i should be looking towards the west if i'm looking from the ship to the new position i should be looking towards the east and with that We've come to an end of this class on bearing and distance. Please you can always go through these examples again in case there's something you missed the first time around. And then, as usual, it is time for us to take a few questions for us to try in our own free time to ensure we have complete understanding of the subject matter. So, let's see. Um, the first question is from the year 2018, model 2, question 6, also 2021, model 1, question 39. Could also look at 2015, question 5. 2004, 2004, question 12, and the last but definitely not least, 2001, question 22. And these can all be found on your old 3 schools jam app. So do well to get your app, activate it, get these questions, and solve them. You can comment your answers beneath this video, and we'll reach out to you to let you know how you performed. If right and if wrong, we shall try to give you points. To help you get the correct answer. Also, do want to subscribe to this channel to see more videos covering various topics across your different subjects as you prepare for your examination. My name is Athanasius. Thank you very much for watching.